I don't just work behind the camera. I also do voiceovers. I've acted in a broadcast television series, as well as hosted a few TV shows of my own. Here's just a few. Check this out. Hey, I'm Video Bob, and people ask me all the time where I get my cool t-shirts with the funny sayings on them. Well, I order them online at wickedjester.com. They have a long list of funny, sarcastic, rude, and just plain deranged t-shirts for men and women in sizes all the way up to 6X for you really fat bastards. They have over 100 designs available. So, if you want to get attention everywhere you go, order a few shirts from wickedjester.com and people will stare at your shirt instead of that booger hanging out your nose. Lizards and snakes. Goblins and ghouls. Monsters from space. They're coming after you. <laughs> We're proud to present to you the worst movies ever made. <laughs> Video Bob, stupid movie of the week. Hey, this is Carrot Top, and as part of my community service work, I have to watch Video Bob's stupid damn movie every week. And uh, I'm having dinner, too. Dinner and stupid movie with Bob. And look, it looks like Bob's belly. Look, go on a diet, you bastard. Go on a diet. Ah. Attention, B horror movie fans. I'm Video Bob, host of the hit show, Stupid Movie of the Week. And now it's your chance to own a few of my most requested episodes. First, you get the Roger Corman classic, A Bucket of Blood. No, you're gonna shoot me, don't shoot! <laughs> Next, the Vincent Price epic, The House on Haunted Hill. And for you zombie lovers, a carnival of souls. You get all three DVDs for only $19.95 by calling 1-888-636-0995 or visit us at stupidmovietheweek.com. Don't wait. Order now! I just might. So call now. This time on Comic Spotlight, Doug Richardson, Carrot Top, and I'm your host, Video Bob! Man, I had to go shopping with my wife the other day because she wanted to buy a new vacuum. And, uh, I mean, I don't know if you've ever gone shopping for a vacuum. This is something a guy would normally never do, you know? It's one, it's usually, if a guy goes shopping for a vacuum, he's driving down the road and you see one on the front of somebody's house out by the curb. Hey, that's still there later. I'm picking that sucker up. I bet I can fix that. It's usually how I got my vacuums, you know? So she wants one of these fancy European vacuums. Uh, we go into the fancy European vacuum store. Lady tells us, yes, this is one of our finest models. It's $1,100. $1,100, are you out of your freaking mind? You know? <laughs> $1,100, man. This, this thing better be pretty kick-ass. So she says, well, one of the features is you can reduce the suction on this model. <laughs> Why in the hell would you want to reduce the suction on a vacuum, lady? I mean, I want a vacuum for 1100 bucks. I want it to pull tax out of the carpet, you know what I'm saying? I want chunks of slab to come loose. I want it to drill for oil, okay? Molten magma should be coming out of the carpet. I want the vacuum to be so powerful that every time I vacuum, people in China's shoes are stuck in the floor like, oh no! Fat man vacuuming again! She says, no, 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 sir. The reason there's reduced suction is for vacuuming your lace drapes. Do I look like I've got lace drapes? Lace panties, maybe, but lace drapes. I said, hey, lady, how does it work on a Velvet Elvis clothes pinned over the window? It works pretty damn good, actually. We bought that stupid thing. I like groceries. I love going shopping, getting more groceries. I love you, you know, you go into the store, and you already know what you want to get when you walk in. Yeah, I'm going to get some Q-tips, I'm going to get some shampoo, you know, and... 
Mm, maybe I'll pick up some bread and some milk. And if I'm going to get milk, I might as well get cereal. The hardest thing in the world to pick out. You could buy a house, a car, decide to have children. These are all easier decisions than picking out cereal. You know, you get down that aisle, you're just like a zombie. You're just, oh my God. It used to be easy to pick out cereal when you were a kid because basically, you know, you just look for whichever had the best prize in the box, right? Best prize. Well, now I pick it out based on the prize in the bottom of my toilet bowl. <laughs> You're like, hmm, bran and wheat and, oh, look, marshmallows, marshmallows. We want that. Go digging in the bottom. You never wash your hands either. You're like, screw it, you know. <laughs> it's my cereal. Get the crappy little prize out of there. I like, I like Captain Crunch. You guys like Captain Crunch? Little yellow chunks of wax. It's like impenetrable by milk. It's like little pebbles, you know? It's got that nice little waxy oil stain floating on top. I don't know why it is, no matter how old I get, I never remember to take the spoon out of the bowl when I put it in the sink and turn the water on full blast because it hits the spoon and you get this nice little umbrella of water that hits the toaster in the back. And of course, you know. I think that goes along the same lines of cooking naked. Don't ever cook naked. Oh, you know, it starts off innocent enough, you know, you have a little rumble with your honey. You know what I'm saying? You say, hey, baby, I'm going to go in the kitchen and get us some, something to drink. And then your tummy's grumbling after your workout. Decide you're going to maybe have some eggs, have some bacon. Next thing you know, you're standing there naked, holding a spatula. And I know you're picturing me this way now. Sizzling, <laughs> baby. Mm. Next thing you know, pop. You get hit with hot grease someplace you never want to get hot grease, and I have the scars to prove it. Man, I'm as excited as a blind lesbian in a fish market. <sighs> Are there any lesbians here tonight? I'm a lesbian. Proud of it. I'm out of the closet, baby. <sighs> you can smell it in the room. Oh, wait. I like lesbians. I'm rather fond of them myself. I don't like the regular lesbians, like the kind you see on Howard Stern and stuff. You know, the, those are like the lipstick lesbians. I like the other ones. You know, the ones that look like Billy Ray Cyrus? They shave the side of their heads, you know? They get that mullet, you know? Or short in the front. Business in the front, party in the back. The kind of woman drives a 4x4, rolls her cigarettes up in her sleeve. And, Hi, how you doing? Uh, my name is Shirley. Wears men's jeans, you know, men's watch. Something about men's jeans on a woman makes their ass look square. You know that? It's kind of like the tailgate of a truck. And they got the chain wallet, you know, like a biker. Their Tattoo, name. leathery skin. That turns me on. I don't know why. Try to grow the mustache. They, they really try that. Have you noticed that? I love it. It's I like when they change their female name to seem more, more male. You know, like Karen becomes K-Ron. I like playing the gender game. You know, when you see somebody and you have no idea if they're a man or a woman, you can't figure it out. So you figure out, you know, we'll ask their name. That'll clue us in. And they're like, and then it's something like Terry or Sandy, you know, <laughs> or Robbie, you know, it could be anything, you know. So there was this one person that for several years we could not figure out if it was an extremely ugly woman or just a man with big, large breasts. I don't know. Are, are you here tonight? We could vote. No? <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed my presentation. And I hope that when you decide to get your video done, you call me, Video Bob. I think I'll be seeing you in the future.